just as you'd expect. Let's go to my next guest. Joining me live is Deputy Nationals Leader Perrin Davey. We've got a bit to touch on, but I'm sure you've been watching on like a lot of us at what unfolded at, at Westfield. It feels like a very low ebb for, for the country to imagine something like this can, can happen, can't it? The, the, the senseless nature of this violence and, and the deaths is, is, I think, what has struck most. Absolutely. I mean, thoughts and prayers go out to the families of, of all the victims and to the families of those who are still in hospital. Uh, I wish them all and hope that they all make a, a safe, stable and speedy recovery. Um, there's there's a lot of thought into the response and uh, as, as the uh, um, Centre Point... CEO just said it was a fast response, it was a quick response and let's also not forget the response of members of the public who uh, also went out to to help and I, I am sure that their actions saved lives. Um, very, very tragic circumstances and I am just grateful that it is such a rare occurrence in Australia but that can in no way take away from the pain that the community mm. of Bondi Junction and the families of the victims must be feeling. Yeah, I, I guess that, that sort of informs us as how we respond, not necessarily overreacting in terms of changing things permanently, but wanting to do anything that, that can be done to avoid it in the future. Um, let's get on to some of the news of the day. The supermarket inquiry today, hearing some pretty explosive claims, including from a whistleblower who sat in on these negotiations between supermarkets and suppliers. It's made allegations that basically it's all about the market power of the supermarkets. They, they pressure the suppliers and get the result they want and, and rake in the profits. Does this show this inquiry has really been worthwhile? Oh, absolutely, the inquiry has been worthwhile because we've heard these claims not just today. Uh, we've also heard the claims from suppliers directly who have um, often at much reluctantly but wanting to get on the record the way that they feel they've been treated by the supermarkets. Um, so it's absolutely valuable. I also acknowledge that Coles and Woolies are saying, well, wait a minute, you know, you're pointing the finger at us, but there's bigger players than us that are also having an impact. So go and, go and talk to the uni levers and the crafts as well. And I think we do need to talk to them, but we've got to stop this pointing the finger up and down and actually have some people acknowledge that there are things that they can learn from mm. this inquiry, there are things they can do better, particularly and start by treating our hard-working farmers and manufa food manufacturers across the supply chain a little bit better. So, and part of the changes that Labor has been talking around those changes in terms of being able to be whistleblowers and, um, you know, not being punished, supposedly, if you raise these issues. Do you think that's feasible? As soon as you raise something, a supermarket could just coincidentally a year later decide to, decide to go with another farmer, another supplier. Is that going to be something really hard to police? Well, and that is what we've heard from farmers and suppliers where they have been reluctant to air their grievances because they're scared that they'll have, um, they'll be cut off uh, from the process. But we do need to look at that. Uh, the idea of a mandatory code of conduct is a good start and I think that is important. So I support that recommendation from Craig Emerson. But I do agree with Alan Fells who just on Monday told this inquiry that uh, we can go further. We can look at divestiture powers. Okay. And I think that... Um, when people are saying we shouldn't have it because it will deplete competition, you look at other areas where we have uh, enacted sort of forms of divestiture of powers and we've actually led to increased competition. So I think we need to keep a very open mind about this, but a good start is okay. the mandatory code of conduct and then look at how we can do divestiture in a sensible, practical way. Ten seconds. What have we got behind you there? You've sort of got a different backdrop for us every week. Postcards from Daniloquin. Um, <laughs> some sort of ag field uh, that's not in season. This, this, is, this is my backyard. I'm, I'm on the edge of the hay plains right. at Canago um, on one of Australia's oldest sheep studs and um, I've got the lovely smell of the sheep behind me coming, <laughs> coming across. But big skies, there Australian big skies. It is absolutely beautiful. Can't quite see the sheep. There you go. You can tell I'm a, 
uh, city slicker, I guess you'd call it, born and raised, wouldn't have a clue what's happening there. But I'll do my best. Perrin Davey, thank you.